In the previous video, we discussed using annotations to quickly make notes on screen when either in a review session or preparing shots for comp artists. In this video, we'll go over Nuke Studio's Export Manager. The Export Manager is another powerful feature in Nuke Studio that's not only going to allow you to create a complete backend folder structure for your show or integrate one that already exists, but also it's going to allow you to create EDL and XML files to send back to editorial, transcode footage to different file formats and resolutions, and automatically generate Nuke scripts for compositing. So let's take a look at how we can do all of that. First, I'm going to turn off our annotations. We don't need to see those right now. So you can either export clips or footage from the bins. You can export entire sequences, or you can export individual shots if you choose to. Let's start off with the clips in these bins. Let's take this one for example. We'll right click on this and go to export or control shift E on the keyboard. This opens our export dialog box. Up here at the top left, we're going to process as clips. Now we only have this option because we're just using the clips from the bins. If we check out our other drop down options. You can see that they're grayed out and not applicable to this project item that we have selected. Right below that is a list of preset options that you can choose from on how you want to process these clips. So you can either choose to transcode these clips as an Apple ProRes MOV or as a DNX HD MOV, as a DPX sequence, or as an MOV with the photo JPEG codec. You can also choose to duplicate these, add new ones, create your own. Over here, if we choose to add a new one, we'll just click the plus button, add a new preset, and allow us to build our own. Minus that for now. Right next to that, we're able to duplicate any of these that we might have selected. If I select this, I'll duplicate that one, see it duplicates it for us. So let's go ahead and just process these clips. They're currently in a TIFF file format at 1920 by 1080. Maybe we'll reduce that by half the size and change it to JPEG. So what I'll do, I'm, I'm going to use this copy of my DPX. If we look down here, I'm going to export to. So this is basically going to export to wherever you saved your project to. You can choose a different path to export. Like I'll do myself here, just for quicker access. Now if we look in our export structure window, we can see based off of our template up here, which I'm going to rename this to, say, JPEG because we're going to be exporting out a JPEG sequence. In our export structure, we can see that we already have a template set up for us. First, it's going to create a folder for us based off of the bin path, wherever the bin path might be named. These are called tokens, these little words inside these curly braces. You can see a list of other tokens here as I hover over this one. So if you input any of these, it's automatically going to name it based off of the metadata that it finds. Inside this folder, it's going to create another file. The file is going to be based off the clip name. So wherever the clip name is, it's going to name it that with a frame padding of four digits and then the extension of the file format that we're going to be saving to. Go over here to the content for this, we can see how we want to transcode our images. So we're going to leave it at RGB, RGBA, alpha, depth. This is JPEG, so we'll just leave it at RGB. Color space, you can change the color space if you want to do that. Maybe we'll just change it around to uh, the Rec 709. If you had multiple views, you'd be able to select the views you want to output. We'll change this to JPEG. We have different options based off the file type, but how do you want to do that? We'll go quality, 75, that's fine. I'm going to choose to reformat this. You have the option to scale it by percentage. We'll just do 0.5. Or if you wanted to, you can use custom or select from any preset format size here or choose a custom one if you don't see the one you need. I'll set that back to scale. Resize by the width. And cubic filter is fine. These options don't necessarily apply to the clip that we're working with right now. But we'll come back around to those if they come up again. Right below our export structure is a version token number. If we did have a version token in our file path name here, we'd be able to designate where we want that version to start at. And below that, we have a preview of where this is going to be written to and how it's going to be written out based off the file naming convention that we've designated here. We can choose to use either the source frame numbers or create a custom frame number for that. Now, if you have a render manager such as Deadline or Cube, you'll be able to select Render With and it'll show up in your drop down menu here, like say Deadline if you want to use that. Otherwise, you can just use Nuke Studio's built-in frame server, basically a background renderer. It's going to open up different threads in the background so you can continue working on your main thread while it's processing. Or you can choose a single render process and that's just going to process on your main thread. All right, so let's go ahead and hit export. Let's see when I hit export now, it pops us into our background renders window. And we can see that it's processed our shots for us. Here's our job name, basically. And it has the status of that job. 100% and it's completed. If we want to take a further detailed look, we can go into the logs and then we'll see 
how each frame was processed. Status is okay. It's great. If there's any errors, we'd see errors and we'd show only errors if there was any. This out. Over in this window is our export queue. So when we sent that off to the frame server, it populated this for us. If I drop down this arrow, we'll be able to actually open up the folder where this was saved to. So if we click this little magnifying glass button, take a look at that. Here it is. This is our folder name that it was named, and it's transcoded it to JPEGs, and it's 960 by 540. So that's what we want. Let's go back to our project panel and view our sequence again. Now, aside from processing these clips, we can also process sequence or process shots individually. So let's start with exporting the sequence. Select the sequence, right click, export, or control shift E on the keyboard. Now, this time, instead of process as clips, you have the options to process a sequence or process as shots. If we were to process as shots, we would process all of the shots contained within our sequence. For now, we're going to hold off on that and process this as a sequence. Using either one of these presets here, we can do ProRes Movie, DNX HD Movie, and even export EDLs or an XML for editorial, DPX image sequence, or a photo JPEG movie. Now, once again, these are just templated presets. You can create your own and save them here as well. If there's any you want to actually save with the project so it stays kind of with the project, you can just take it and drag and drop it over here so it stays with the project preset. We'll go ahead and export an XML just because it'll be quick for us. Once again, I want to select my export path because I don't want to use my project root folder for this. Here again, we have our export structure based off the template we're using or the preset that we're using. So it's going to create a folder based off the name of the sequence that we have selected. And in that folder, it's going to create the XML file based off the sequence name. If we look at our options, we only have the option to include markers if there are any. So no version numbers being used in this sequence currently, but I guess it wouldn't hurt to include one. It might be a little confusing just because the name of the sequence is edit underscore v01. So when we add in the version token on here, we have two version numbers on there. Let's show you what I mean. So open curly bracket, version, close curly bracket. Now when we select the name, you can see it's added on that version for us. And we can define what version number we want to start with, two, three, four, five, whatever it might be. We'll just leave it at one for now. Now, if you did have to export this out again, it would automatically version up the next version for you now that it has that version number in there. All right, so we got our preview of our file path where it's saving to and what it's going to be named. We can choose which tracks we want to include in that XML right here. Might as well just include all of them. We can change the start frame for the sequence or make it a custom one if you want. We'll just leave it at the sequence start frame. All right, so with that set, we'll hit export. Once again, it pops us into our export queue. I'm gonna hit no on this, but I don't wanna keep that. If we drop this down, we'll be able to navigate directly to where this XML has been saved by pressing the magnifying glass. Opens up our window for us, saved in this folder here, and there's our XML. Now, if I was in editorial, I can just take this, drag and drop it into Premiere. Put that in there, and there we go. We have our project in Premiere, make any edits. Then we can export this back out as an XML if we want and bring those changes right back into the new studio. So, so far we've exported out clips. We've transcoded those into JPEGs and then we've exported our sequence as an XML. Now we move on and export shots from the timeline. Once again, you can either export shots from the sequence like this and control shift E and you'll process as shots if you want, process all these shots. Or we can select individual shots that we might want to use. Okay, we'll do this one first just to show. What we can do is with the shot here that we have, we can right click on it, we can export. I'm going to process as a shot. Process sequence, but we're going to do as a shot. Now using these exports here, these presets, you can see there's a few different ones. Basic nuke shot. Shot with annotations. If you're using a multi view project, you can do that. Or you can just transcode this shot. You know, this one's set to DPX, but you can be change it to JPEGs. Let's actually use the basic nuke shot with annotations because I know there's annotations on this one. So that's going to help us out. Again, I'm going to choose my custom folder here just for the sake of the demo. So now we can see in our export structure window that this is really being built up. We're going to have a lot of folders going to be built out of here. We're going to have a lot of files that are going to be created as well. So it's going to create a folder based off of the shot name. 
And within that folder, it's going to create a nuke folder. And then the nuke folder, it's going to create a folder for the script, nuke script. So if we look, click on this, we'll see all our settings for the nuke script. It's going to name it accordingly based off of their tokens here. Within that nuke folder, it's also going to create a renders folder. The render is going to be named based off of this naming convention here. If we want to see what that looks like in a final. We can preview it here, select that line, then preview it. It's also going to create an annotations folder for us to include any of the annotations that may have been made on screen during review or prior to setting up this comp script. Once again, you can choose what tracks to export for this particular shot. Let's choose all tracks and just do that. Now this shot doesn't have any tags on it, but if we had multiple shots selected for the entire sequence, we'd be able to select which tags we'd want to include on this export. And you can choose to export handles if you like, you know, either using the entire clip length or the cut length, plus, you know, an additional amount of frames that you want to add before and after. Choose to apply any retimes that may have been added onto that particular shot. And of course, the start frame, whether it's the source or custom. We'll leave it to custom. And then we're going to render on our frame server here. All right, so let's go ahead and export this shot out. All right, so if you can see, let's go back to this and let's show the export window again. We'll open that folder we just created. So we can see what's going on here side by side. So within that export path right here, created the shot folder, which is this one right here. Within this shot folder, created the nuke folder. Within the nuke folder, created a folder for the script. And renders and annotations. So we look in the script folder. Here's our nuke script. We look in the renders folder. It hasn't been rendered yet, but that's where the render is going to go when we render our script out. Then in the annotations folder, we can see it's created an annotation for us as well. I'm going to close these windows out. So great, now we have a basic understanding of how Nuke Studio's export manager works. In the next video, we're going to talk about even more abilities of the export manager in Nuke Studio.